putting a mask on your head and demanding money is too easy. The organizers of these robberies decided to be more creative. Some dressed up as policemen and arrested the guards, others dug a tunnel from the sewers into the bank vault and had a picnic. And others lived under the guise of honest antique dealers for several years, so that one day they could steal diamonds worth more than $100 million. The Glasgow to London mail train has been the subject of several motion pictures thanks to a daring robbery in 1963. Once a month, one of the carriages on the train was filled with bags of old bills. They would be sent to the English bank to be rewritten and burned. Learning of this, antique dealer Bruce Reynolds gathered a group of 15 men and pulled off the famous heist. The robbers stopped the train in an open field by faking a semaphore signal. Then they disconnected the right carriage and ordered the driver to move it to Bridge O Bridge, where a truck had been parked beforehand. The burglar's booty was 2.6 million pounds, the modern equivalent of about 46 million pounds. The theft, which had been planned for three months, was completed in half an hour. Having loaded 120 bags of cash, the gang had a party on a nearby farm. The occasion was not only the successful completion of the case, but also Reynolds' birthday. There the robbers spent several days drinking wine, relaxing, and playing Monopoly. It was the fingerprints on the playing field that helped investigators identify the robbers. The robbers went to jail, but the police never found the stolen money. The robbery of the Japanese bank Neon Shintaku Ginko is among the most mysterious unsolved crimes of the 20th century. Remarkably, it was committed by one man. In the fall of 1968, reports of a bomb planted in the bank's branch began coming in. Soon the calls stopped, but the story did not end there. Cash collectors were carrying cash for one of the Toshiba factories when they were stopped by an unknown man on a police motorcycle. He told them that the mansion of the manager of Neon Shintaku Ginko had been blown up and that there was also a bomb in the collection vehicle. Hearing this, the four bank employees ran out of the van in a hurry. A policeman crawled under the van to examine the underside and look for an explosive device. Moments later, flames and smoke appeared. The man started screaming that the vehicle was about to explode. As the car was waiting for the money collectors to disperse, he got behind the wheel and made off with 300 million yen, leaving only the motorcycle and a used smoke bomb on the road. The theft was investigated by more than 170,000 police officers. Despite a lot of evidence, no one has yet been able to identify the resourceful robber. Filmmakers have filmed the robbery of the Societe Generale Bank in Nice more than once. When the photographer Albert Spaggieri learned that the cash vault was located close to the city's sewer system, he had the idea of drilling a tunnel. To carry out his plan, Spaggieri assembled a team of professional criminals. One of them tested and advanced the alarm system for sensitivity to vibrations. Especially for this he rented a safe deposit box and placed in it a mechanical alarm clock. When the clock rang late that night, the bank alarm system did not respond. Two months later, the 8-meter-high tunnel was ready. Not only did the intruders reinforce the walls with concrete, but they also installed lighting. On the Bastille holiday weekend, they found themselves in the vault and emptied the boxes for several days. A picnic of wine and hors d'oeuvres was also held there. In terms of modern money the robbers took out about 24 million euros. The hallmark of the theft was the inscription on the wall of the safe, without weapons, without hatred, without violence. None of the criminals were ever punished. And the only defendant, Albert Spaggieri, escaped from the courtroom. He was never seen again. Multi-level security systems and sophisticated encryption methods do not always guarantee complete safety of money and valuables. On the contrary, sometimes modern technology plays into the hands of robbers, allowing them to do without weapons, hostages, and masks. One such case occurred in the fall of 1978 in Los Angeles. Computer consultant Stanley Mark Rifkin was working under contract with several clients, including a company that serviced computers at Security Pacific National Bank. He had no trouble finding out the securitization code required to transfer the funds. The man then called the bank under the name of a fictitious employee, Mike Hansen. 
He gave the secret combination and asked to transfer $10.2 million to a private Swiss account, which he had opened in advance. The hacker later used the money to buy several kilograms of Soviet diamonds. Incidentally, the Security Pacific National learned of the disappearance only a week later. Mark Rifkin was doing fine until he showed the precious stones to a lawyer he knew. Without thinking too much, he told the FBI about his buddy's acquisition. The crook spent the next 10 years in prison. This is the largest art theft in American history. On the night of March 18, 1990, a Dodge Daytona pulled up to the service entrance of a private art gallery in Boston and two police officers got out. When they asked to open the door, a young man wearing a cowboy hat instead of a uniform appeared on the doorstep. He was moonlighting as a watchman and did not take his job seriously. The young man was forced to show his ID and then handcuffed. According to the police, the station received a call about a disturbance on the museum grounds, and the guard's facial features reminded them very much of a photo sketch. The policemen turned out to be disguised thieves. After their arrest they slowly took out 13 exhibits, including works by Vermeer, Rembrandt, Flink, Manet, and Degas. Everything lasted an hour and a half, no one bothered the criminals. Leaving the gallery, they erased the records from the cameras, so the men were identified only many years later. The search for paintings worth more than $500 million were engaged in the best agents of the FBI. The museum still promises $10 million to anyone who returns the stolen goods. And while in the place of the disappeared paintings are painted on empty frames, Antwerp is considered the largest center for the diamond trade. Through it passes 80% of all uncut diamonds mined in the world and about 50% of the gems made of them. In the central part of the city the Antwerp World Diamond Center is located. The almost perfect security system, which includes a heat detector, seismic sensor and radar, did not help to save the priceless collection. A group of robbers led by the Turin jeweler Leonardo Notar Bartolo managed to steal two-thirds of all the jewelry from the vault. The preparations for the robbery took more than a year. The criminals acted according to a Hollywood script. First, they rented an office in the name of an imaginary company. Then, in order to establish their reputation, they met with clients and even made deals. And most importantly, during this time, the burglars managed to overwrite information on a magnetic card and create a universal key that would fit all the doors in the building. On Valentine's Day they broke into the vault, taped over the camera lenses, switched the tapes and robbed more than a hundred safes. Experts estimated the stolen diamonds and jewelry at $107 million. In 2009, Stockholm residents witnessed an original theft that stumped the local police. It took just 20 minutes for the criminals to steal one billion kroner from a heavily guarded cash vault. At dawn on September 23rd, three armed and masked men landed on the roof of the building in a hijacked helicopter. They smashed a skylight and used explosives to break into steel safes. The kidnappers used ropes to lift their loot and then disappeared in the same helicopter, leaving law enforcers helpless. The criminals made sure that the police helicopters did not take to the air. They placed a fake bomb on the hangar and scattered steel barbs on the road to protect them from car chases. In addition, an ace was involved in the operation and was able to land on a very small pad. The amount stolen was so large that there was a temporary shortage of cash at the city's ATMs. There were more than 20 employees in the building at the time of the robbery, but none of them were hurt.